Jackie, thank you for coming into studio. Sorry about the four-hour commute. Coffee's on me. Let's start with the who, though. Okay, let's start with the W-I-C-T. Give us something to work with as a working definition. We'll set the table, then we'll move on. All righty. Women in Cable Telecommunications uh, is what we are called. We were founded in 1979. Uh, We currently have about 10,000 members across the United States. And just this year, we went international with the addition of chapters in the United Kingdom and in Mexico. Uh, We are all about being a part of the cable media and technology industry. Uh, We're creating the leaders of tomorrow for not only women in this industry, um, but for anybody that is underrepresented, um, veterans, people of color, Uh. people with disabilities, LGBT communities. Um, So we're really about increasing awareness around diversity. So it's a It's not just a recruitment program, right? It's also an educational program. It's also an opportunity platform, frankly, it sounds like to me. Absolutely. Okay. And you have an event coming up, and I noticed that it's called Tech It Out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, check it out. I get it. It's not my first rodeo. But it is the first rodeo that you guys have hosted here for Tech It Out, right? So what are some of the takeaways and what you hope to see happen? It is. This is what we call where leadership meets technology. Uh, In this industry, it's important that we keep up on the most relevant information um, to make ourselves the best that we can be, both as leaders as and as representatives of the industry. Um, check it out this year. Um, they are we are doing it across the country, but this is the first real one for Northern California. Right for this right. chapter. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and we're doing it at the. Sorry. Oh, the Computer <laughs> History think, Museum. Yeah, the Computer History <laughs> Museum in Mountain View. Uh-huh. Uh, Friday, November seventeenth. From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., and we have some really great uh, keynote speakers. Yes, I have to say, first of all, the agenda there is is robust. I was actually just moderating a panel at the Computer History Museum. It's a great place to have a conference. It, it really is. But back to your agenda. Uh, you say it starts at 10 and it goes through 3 o'clock. Um, I have to say the value here, I, I'm used to seeing hundreds of dollars to have kind of access to not just the speakers, but the, you know, the education, the learning that can happen with it too. But the networking is always worth an extra zero usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys are bringing people in at $50? Yeah, $50 for, for the public. And actually, we also have a great deal for students, so $10 for students. We think that our message is, is um, although we could charge a lot more, as you indicated, um, mm-hmm. our message, we'd rather get it out and have a, a better attendance and give more people an opportunity to network with leaders in the industry, um, such as our panel. Right. Yeah. Opportunity is really the word right there, right? Because if you're a student and you have $10 and you have an ID, you can come and network with people who may end up hiring you down the line. Who knows? Uh, at the very least, they can answer some questions for you as well, right? Absolutely. So uh, I did notice that, at, let's see, what, what time is it? One fifty, I think. You have girls who code. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that uh, that presentation because that looks pretty fun. Oh, absolutely. Um, so from Girls That Code, we have Anata Sahini. Um, she is actually a high school student, and she will be um, talking to us about what Girls of Code does. And what they do, for those of you that don't know, is they are a group of high school students that teach girls about coding. And their whole mission is to assure that we have the next generation of computer science um women in computer science right. learning to code and being a part of this whole new world that we have. Yeah, and hopefully shattering some glass along the way too. Yes. Internet and television industry, you have a long, kind of really cool career arc. Can you do some biography for us and tell us how you got started here and how you're winding up in the studio? Absolutely. Um, so I started um, with my current company um, in 1989. And I started as just a customer service rep and not just a customer service rep. I was a customer service rep. Mm-hmm. Um, I get teased often. I came in in like pink sweats and put my feet up on the desk and, <laughs> and was told I was never going to go anywhere. Um, but quickly I became intrigued by all of the technology back then even. Um, back then we still had filters on poles to, mm. to take out a channel and um, we didn't have digital and we didn't have voice. We didn't have any of that. Um, but as we... As I went on, I was able to jump from place to place, not meaning company, but I was just a thirst for knowledge. Um, So I went from like a $12 an hour back then customer service rep, and I built on top of that. I went into information services, and and I learned how to code. Mm. And um, I, I just kind of just filled my head with all the information that I could get. Um, 
my path has led me to be a construction manager uh, with a large company here in the Bay Area. And, um, and it was really hard. I, I was in the same company for 15 years and people that I'd worked side by side with, uh, men mostly, uh, when I got the job, I was surprised that they were just saying that it was because um, I got it because of diversity numbers. Hmm. And I was not happy. I bet not. I was not happy. That's demeaning. I was like, I've worked here for you know this many years right? and I've gone to college and you're cleaning, that up. You're cleaning that up for radio. I appreciate that. I know you <laughs> want to use some different language right there. Right. That's fine. Right. And, you know, and I, and I really worked on myself to be the best that I could be. And, and you know, my answer always is, if, you know, if you don't think I don't wake up every day trying to learn something new about this industry and all this, you are all wrong. Right. Um, and so a lot to prove. Um, always having to set the example as a woman um, when I, if, if I were to act um, in the same mannerisms um, that a male does right now still, mm-hmm. um, I probably wouldn't have a job. So um, it's all about, it's not about, um, you know, against a male or anything. We have a lot of male supporters cool. and couldn't appreciate it more. And we need them, honestly, mm-hmm. to uh, bridge this gap. Right. You mentioned thirst for knowledge in the answer there. And I imagine you mentioned thirst for knowledge in your answer there. And it reminds me of other women who have sat in the studio and talked with me about mentoring, mm-hmm. either offering a mentorship or being mentored. Did that happen along your career path too? Absolutely. Uh, I had a wonderful GM and I was lucky enough to live in the same town as her. And so we commuted together. And so I had a lot of, a lot of mentoring, um, in a car right, (laughs) to and from, from Miranda Napa. And, uh, and you know, she basically just, she flat out told me, she says, you know, you're really smart, but unless you put these other things around it and you network and you learn more and more about the industry, you're going to stay right where you're at. And so that was my indicator that I needed to work on myself. And I worked on myself by joining Women in Cable Mm -hmm. um, and having all this amazing access to people that I could ask questions for and that I look up to and what they've done in the industry. Yeah, it's a transitioning industry, too. Oh, and by the way, the commuting, using the commute uh, for that, for mentoring is so much better than just listening to a podcast. (laughs) Please listen to my podcast. All right, so (laughs) let's talk about the internet and television industry, right? Because it's right here on your splash page for the WICT, internet and television industry. That can be kind of dichotomous right now, right? Right, yeah. One of the things that, you know, we're considering as an organization as a whole is the word cable, right? Um, Cable kind of tends to have people shy away, but it really is about the media industry. And and all the big MSOs are still labeled as cable companies Mm -hmm. when in reality we are now software technology companies, right? And big media companies. And so we're still maybe a little behind the change when it comes to the name of the organization, right. but what we're really all about is is um, is this industry as a whole media yeah. software communications, software lo- communications. just multi platform approaches over the top. I imagine some maybe cable cable execs at Thirty Rock don't like that as much, but I worked at Thirty Rock for a while, so they can <laughs> take it. Uh, let's talk about who you'd like to see show up for your event. Oh, so I'm all about um, not only our memberships, but I'm all about the entry level. I'm about students coming out of high school, about um, people in engineering in the in in college, um, and what I w- want to do is share our information and help them get to the next level of what their career, whatever that might be, and give them enough information so that they can choose the right path for themselves. I was um, it was funny. I was just in, in New York for our national conference, um, and we, we were in this in this group talking about. It was almost like I was talking Martian. We were in this group of people and, and we were talking about, you know, women in this industry and where we've come from. And I was literally partnered with probably six or seven um, ladies, millennial ladies. And they're looking at me like I had two heads. And I just turned <laughs> them and I said, you know, I know you don't understand this right now because you're coming into this where you can do anything. Mm. We paved that for you. And right. please go take over the world. Right on. You know, and so it was it was interesting. If you have a student ID card and 10 bucks, you can get your foot in the door. Absolutely. Jackie, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me.